Good morning. Merry Christmas. Glad that you all joined us here this morning on this uh, <clears throat> Sunday morning to uh, celebrate the birth of our Savior. Um, just one uh, note uh, for our worship is um, next Sunday, um, New Year's Day, we will also have one service at 930, both in person and online. So however you'd like to join us next week, but it'll just be one service uh, as well. Um, also, in your bulletin, realize there was a, a misprint. The, um, the hymn of the day is not as listed in your bulletin, but it will be correct up on the screen for you, and I'll remind you of that when we get to that point in the service. So with that, I invite you to stand as you're able as we join in our gathering hymn, Angels We Have Heard on High. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Word made flesh, our life and our salvation. Trusting in the goodness and the loving kindness of our God, our Savior, let us confess our sin. God of life, you promise good news of great joy for all people, and you call us to be messengers of your peace. We confess that too often we hoard our joy, our resources, our security. We nurture conflict with barriers. We neglect our needs of our neighbors and ignore the groaning of creation. Have mercy on us. Where we are self-centered, open our hearts. Where we are reluctant, give us courage. Where we are cynical, restore our trust. Renew us with your grace and give us again the hope of eternal life in you. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the Spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O powerful and unseen God, the coming of your light into our world has brightened weary hearts with peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 62, verses 6 through 12. Upon your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels all day and all night. They shall never be silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest, and give him no rest, until he establishes Jerusalem and makes her renowned throughout the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm. I will not again give your grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink the wine for which you have labored. But those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather it shall drink it in my holy courts. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones. Lift up an ensign over the people. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth. Say to daughter Zion, See, your salvation comes, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called sought out, a city not forsaken, the word of the Lord. The second reading comes from Titus, chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, 
but according to his mercy, through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, this spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you're able for the hearing of the gospel. Our gospel for this morning comes from the gospel of Luke in the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy for all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to all whom he favors. And when the angels had left him and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that had taken place, that which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known to them all that had been told about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard and had been told to them. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Lord. Please be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So this morning we hear it again, this story from the Gospel of Luke. The story we we pick up after Jesus has been born and we hear of the angels that have come to tell the shepherds of the good news that has come for all people. The good news. That today, today is born in the city of David a Messiah, the Savior. We gather to hear each year, we hear this account of Luke, of the, of the birth of our Savior. Of Mary and Joseph going to be registered to Bethlehem because they were of the house and the family of David. Of how the birth came about and she laid him in a manger and the angels came to tell the story familiar text for all of us. Sometimes these familiar texts, it's kind of hard to to think, how else do I say something different? Say something new. Say something that might intrigue you to know the story a little deeper. And as I pondered what that might be, the the words of the angel kind of kept coming back. As she was taught, as the angel was talking to the to the shepherd said, and this will be a sign for you. This will be a sign. You'll find the baby wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Seeing baby wrapped in linen cloths and and lying in a manger probably is not much of a new thing. But why is it that the angels have come? Why did the angels say, this will be the sign? What did it mean? What did it mean for the shepherds to have them say, this is a sign for you this day? But what are signs for us? What are those signs that we look for? What do signs even do? We see signs all the time. As we drive, right, we see signs on the road to tell us how to get from one place to another. Now we got signs on the roundabouts to tell us get which in lane so that we don't run into anybody else, right? We have signs that help us get to our destination. Signs that tell us we're on the right track if we're out looking for something. Maybe something's lost and we try and find the tracks and the, tra- and the signs of where it is that we might have laid it. 
Signs are all around us. Signs that tell us even more than we, than we might expect. And sometimes we just, we just fail to see them. Signs were the things that the shepherds and really all of God's people have been looking for for a long time. So I thought when the, what the angel said to the shepherds, I wondered what they were expecting, what they really were trying to figure out, what these, this encounter with the angels was really all about. Did they understand what it was they were looking for when they went to find this, this child wrapped in bands of cloth and laying in a manger? Did they know that they were really the first to hear the story, the account about the birth of the Savior, of the people? Were they surprised when they arrived and they found Mary and Joseph and, and the baby in this, in this, laying in this manger in this probably very unpretentious kind of place? But God, I think, knew what he was doing as he sent his angels sent them to tell them of the sign that was to come. See, after all, God had long promised a Savior, long promised to send a child, a shepherd, to lead God's people in righteousness and justice. He long, he long promised a new shepherd to shepherd his people. So maybe it was, a, it was important that, the, the, that his angels came to the shepherds, the ones who guide the sheep just as God has promised to send a new shepherd. To send the message to the shepherd just seems right, at least to me, maybe to us. But did the shepherds understand? Did they know what was going on and why that news was sent to them? We heard the account of the, Je of the, or the birth of Jesus and how, Mary and, and, and how many in those days before Jesus knew that the promise of a Savior They've been looking for the signs for many generations. They've been looking for the signs that one day a light would come and overtake the darkness. They remembered the words of the signs that would come from the, from the prophet Isaiah, that a son would be born, a savior would be given, as we heard from, his, from the book of Isaiah last night. It wasn't until the angels came this day to tell the shepherds that the world would begin to understand that that sign, that that promise had come true. And God wanted the world to know. He wanted the whole people to know. He wanted Mary and Joseph to know. He wanted everyone to know the good news of the birth of God's own son. And so God sent his messenger. He sent his angels to the shepherds outside of Bethlehem to let them know of the arrival, to go and see the sign that had been given the sign of the promise that, that the, the promise had been fulfilled, that now a child has been born, that a son has been given. And now it was just for the shepherds to go and to see this sign, to see this child, this news that the Lord had been made known to them. And so we're told they went with haste. They went quickly to see this sign, to find the baby wrapped in, in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And they arrived and they began to tell tell all the things they had seen and heard about this child. They told Mary and Joseph, they told everyone that they met. It says everyone was amazed. They were all amazed at what the shepherd said. I didn't say why they were amazed. I don't know if they were amazed because it was shepherds telling them or it was amazed because this news had finally come. And they began to wonder whether or not it was all true. But even more than the excitement of the shepherds was they told everyone. They told everyone as they came, as everyone as was gathered around to see this child, they, get, they told everyone as they went back to find their sheep on the edge of town. They saw the sign. And they gave witness to what they had seen. And so here on this Christmas Day, we also celebrate with joy the birth of our Savior, the Messiah, the one that God had promised. We gather to give witness to the sign, to hear the good news for all people. We gather to give glory to our God, to give thanks for this day, for on this day has been born in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. On this day we receive the sign that is good news for all people. Amen.
So I invite you to rise as we sing our hymn, It's Good Christian Friends Rejoice, number 288 in the hymn. Living together in trust and hope, we are bold to say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the quiet of a holy night, a babe came and changed the world forever. A mighty king born in a lowly stable. God dwells in humble places. God dwells in our lives, changing us too. Christ is born. The church in every land makes a joyful noise to herald your coming, O God. We give thanks for all who give voice to our praise and all who lead worship. O Emmanuel, hear us as we pray. Bring heavenly peace to this world and end conflict. Raise up leaders in every nation who will establish equal justice for all people. Give courage to all who speak out against oppression and advocate for the powerless. O Emmanuel, hear us as we pray. Guard the lives of any in danger, especially those who work to protect others. Lead any who are in desperate circumstances to sanctuary, help, and safety. Grant rest to the weary and soothe those who are troubled in mind, body, or spirit. O Emmanuel, hear us as we pray. Bless all who gather to worship this holy day. Be present at our tables and celebrations and watch over those who travel. Sustain charities, outreach ministries, and food pantries that give generously to people in need. O Emmanuel, hear us as we pray. Pondering the mysteries of eternal love made flesh in Jesus Christ, we commend all for whom we pray into the mercy of our God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We take a moment to share the peace of Christ with those around us this morning.
please stand as you're able. Let us pray. God of abundance, receive and bless these gifts we have offered. Join our hearts with song of the angels and gather us at your table of celebration. Strengthen us to share with all the world the abundance of your grace upon grace poured out in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wonder and the mystery of the word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that be holding the God made visible, we may be drawn to the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of the angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for the promises to your people. Blessed are you for the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. It was on the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took God took bread. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a cup. He gave thanks and he gave it to all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. For with this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection, and we look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us and bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people and fill us with your light and bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, O Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power from the host, Most High God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All has been made ready. All are welcome to come and to gather at the table. For who the table is set, who is welcome? All are welcome. I invite you to be seated. Um, just a, a quick word about uh, how we're going to proceed for today. A little bit different than we normally. I'll still invite you to come up and gather around the altar, whether kneeling or stand as you would. Um, the trays will have wine in them, wine around the outside, the grape juice is in the middle, whichever you would choose. Um, and if you need gluten-free, let me know, and we'll have that for you too. And then you can return to your seats. But come, for all has been made ready this day.
Please stand as you're able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have fed us at the table with gifts of grace and truth and life. As you have gathered us in joy, send us forth as messengers of your peace. Make us shine with the good news of your glory, born to us in, this, in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now may the God bless you and keep you. May Jesus grant you peace and truth, and the Spirit send peace on your hearts now and forever. Amen. We close with our hymn, Joy to the World. Christ the Savior is born. Go in peace. Proclaim the good news. Thanks be to God.